that you're Welcome. here. Come on in. It's cold outside. Right this way. Merry Christmas. Welcome everyone to Cross Connection Church Online. So happy to have you in our household and can't wait to spend the next hour or so with you. Please do have a seat. What a joy to be with you here on Christmas Eve. We want to recreate a Hallmark Christmas for you this evening. Well, it's so true. We don't want you to be happy. We want you to be Hallmark, Hallmark happy. happy. It's going to be a wonderful night together. Marty, can you tell us more what we can expect? I would love to. We've got carols. We're going to sing together. We've got special music and we've also got special readings. We also have a really amazing story for adults and children alike, and a very special guest at the end, don't we, Marty? You'll have to wait and find out. I don't know about you, Marty, but nothing gets me in the Christmas spirit like Christmas carols. How about you? Well, we'll have to see. All right, why don't we go to the Duncast? Darren and Sarah, take it away. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so tender and mild, sleep.
now back to you, Marty. <laughs> Thank you so much, Darren and Sarah. That was beautiful. Imagine you had to sing, Marty. I wouldn't want to. And none of us would. Thank you so much. Are you getting in the mood, Marty? You know what? That really helped. Thank you, Darren and Sarah. It was wonderful. And next up, um, we just want to comment on the fact that it has actually been a really challenging year. And so we want to go on site with Alyssa Hebner um, reporting about another couple that had a difficult year. Let's go there now. This is Alyssa Hebner reporting to you live from the little town of Bethlehem. The town is filling up fast as people arrive from all over to report for the census issued by Caesar Augustus. I see a young couple coming now. Let's see what they have to say. Hi, where are you guys traveling from? And have you found a place to stay, stay yet? I hear that everything is almost full. Okay, so he's not going to talk. Um, yeah, so we actually came here this afternoon from Nazareth and yeah, everything that we've checked out, hotels, B&Bs, motels, everything um, is fully booked. So hopefully we find something because I am currently pregnant. I'm about to pop, I think. And so yeah, super tired, super exhausted. I know traveling such a long distance, I know he really is tired of me. So I know he really wants to rest. And so yeah, so hopefully we find a place. I know the last guy we talked to had a shack um, behind his hotel um, that he said we could stay at if we didn't find anything. Super sketchy, but you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. So, yeah. Wow, you guys have come a long way, and it sounds like this experience has been super unsettling for you. I'll let you guys get back to it. Um, maybe later I will find you and we can catch up and see where you guys end up. Thanks for your time. Not a problem. Back to you, Bennett. Thank you, Alyssa, for bringing us that story. Boy, that sounds really hard. Like, Hallmark, Hallmark hard. hard. Well, Marty, in every Hallmark movie and in every life, there are challenges that need to be overcome. Hmm. And there's that's no different in my community, in uh, Jesus' time. And so tonight, I wonder if we could figure out how to bring a little bit more light into the darkness with Lauren and Elaine lighting our Advent candle. Merry Christmas, everybody. Welcome to our Christmas Eve Advent reading. Lighting a candle is a simple yet profound act. It is a testimony to the power of light over darkness. Four weeks ago, we began our journey toward Christmas and lit the first candle of Advent, the Hope Candle. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. The Virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. The root of Jesse will spring up, one who will arise to rule over the nations. In him, the Gentiles will hope. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Three weeks ago, we lit the second candle of Advent representing love. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Two weeks ago, we lit the third candle, the candle of joy. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Last week we lit, lit the peace candle. Let us remember our need for a Savior to save us from our sins and give us peace with God. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. 
Jesus Christ is the true reason for hope, love, and joy, and peace in this season and forever. As we light the candle of Christ, celebrating the end of Advent and the arrival of Christ and Christmas, let us remember how our Savior came once as a lowly baby, and that the world through him might be saved, and how he will return one day in glory. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The Word became flesh and made His dwelling among us. We have seen His glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. When Jesus spoke again to the people, He said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas from Lord and Elaine. God bless. Wow. Thank you, Lauren and Elaine, for doing such a wonderful job reminding us that Christ truly is the light of the world. I think this would be a great time to pause and have a time of reflection about what that means in our own lives and in our own communities. As we listen to this special music with Christine Miller, I want you to think about how God is asking you to be a light in the darkness this Christmas. Immediately following this special number, we'll move to joining with Darren and Sarah again, leading us in carols. Awesome. Sounds wonderful.
bed the little lord jesus laid down his sweet head the stars in the bright sky looked down where he lay the little lord jesus asleep on the hay the Reach into the life of a miracle child. Look into the manger by the light of the star. Reach out, touch the hand of the baby. wondering how that young mom is doing and if she found a place to rest. Well, wonder no more. Let's go back to Alyssa right now and find out if she's caught up with the young couple. Oh, good. This is Alyssa Huebner, back with you in the little town of Bethlehem, where I have found Mary and Joseph in the only room that they is was left in all of Bethlehem. A lot has changed since I talked to you guys last. You had your baby, congratulations. How are you guys doing? Tell us the story. He's still a bit shell-shocked after having to deliver this baby. Um, yeah, so where to start? Um, very vocal. Um, so this baby is nothing that short of a miracle. Hey, you have to shh my mommy's talking. Okay, that worked. Anyways, so 
Yeah, so I know a lot of moms say that their babies are special and ordinary, um, but this one does not fall flat um, as he was promised to me by God. Um, yeah, so actually there was just a few shepherds that came um, and were worshiping him. They said that um, angels came to them while they were working and said that the Messiah was going to be born in Bethlehem tonight or last night. And so, yeah, so they just left. Oh, you're okay. Yeah, so now we're just going to kind of take it all in and ponder um, in our hearts what what is happening. So, yeah. Wow. The Messiah, the one who's come to save the world from sin and death. What a blessing. I imagine many more will come to worship him in the years to come. Well, you heard it from me first, folks. This, this is just simply amazing. The King of Kings is here. Oh, Herod's not going to be too happy about this, though. Um, wow. Wow. The words of the prophet of Isaiah have come true. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Simply amazing. Thank you so much, Alyssa, for bringing us that story. It's truly an inspiring story. I hate to admit it, I think it's a better story than any Hallmark story I've ever heard. I'd hate to admit it too, but Marty, I think you're right. You know, all of this warm, fuzzy stuff has got me wondering what Reverend Robert and his beautiful wife are doing tonight. Hmm. I heard they have their grandchildren over. Should we check in and see what they're up to tonight? I would love to. Let's go. Oh, honey, I just love when the grandkids come and visit us, don't you? I sure do. Oh, I just love them, and so good to see all your bright, shining faces. It is. Mom, Grandma and I here, we just want to read your story. Okay? Okay? So, we got to get in the story. This is a good story, let me tell you. Um, um, uh, Lexi. Great. Annabelle? Grace. Grace, can you take that please and just set it over there? Thanks, you know. Just found my glasses here. They're on your face. I'm going to find them here. I got them around here somewhere. So you see them, honey? They're on your face. They're <laughs> here on my face. They, there they are. Okay. Oh, looky here. What a good one, honey. Look. Okay. The legend of the three trees. You see that? You see, this story here is about all oh, these tree trees who think they got nothing. They can't amount to anything. They're just a nothing tree, but they have high hopes that they one day will, just like you kids. You probably think, well, maybe I'm not good enough, but you are. You are good enough. Okay. You. You're good enough. All right. And then this, this is a beautiful story, the legend of these tree trees. So I'm, I'm a real good reader, so what I'd like you to do here is just sit back, mm -hmm. relax, and old Grampy, he's going to read you a story. He sure is. I got this here. You guys relaxing? Yeah. Oh, you're good kids. Your mom and daddy should raise you well. Let me just read you this here story. Everybody see? Yep. Okay, I'm just going to get comfy too here because I like to be comfortable. I'm a good reader here. Ready? Life burst into the world on the third day of creation. Okay. From under the water, God brought forth the earth. He sure did. He did those things. 
speaking up through the earth, the soil, and the, and the green plants waved, a million trees, and then the grass grew, and the tide came in, and the cows came home. Did you call Grandma three years ago? Yes, it did, and it happened just like that. Let Grandpa have his nap. That would win. Speaking up through the earth's soil, green plants waved like millions of tiny flakes. Grasses, bushes, and trees grew into every size and shape. The trees towered above all. There were pine trees and poplar, olive and oak, willow and walnut, each held its own seeds and fruit. Their seeds and fruits scattered as animals carried them from the trees. In a green valley, a fox dropped an olive pit. And along a rocky shore, a stork split open an acorn. On a tall mountain, a goat accidentally shook loose a seed from a pine cone. The pit, the acorn, and the seed grew into saplings. Watered by the rain and warmed by the sun, they reached upward. In time, a beautiful olive tree blossomed in the valley. Mm -hmm. A mighty oak stood on a rocky coast, and a tall pine tree stood on the mountain. As each tree grew, it dreamed of what it would become. The olive tree dreamed of becoming a beautiful and important treasure chest, decorated with sparkling jewels. It would hold the greatest treasure in the world. One day, when a woodsman came to the forest, it seemed that the olive tree's dream would come true. The woodsman chose the olive tree from all other trees. The olive tree trembled with happiness. At last, it would become a beautiful treasure chest. The woodsman took the olive tree to his workshop. He cut the wood into the boards and hammered them into a box shape. But to the tree's surprise, the woodsman did not make the box into a treasure chest. He did not polish the olive tree's fine wood or fill the box with gold. Instead, he dragged the box into a stable with messy sheep, smelly cows, and noisy chickens. The woodsman filled the box with hay. The olive tree saw that it had become a manger, a mere feeding box for animals. It knew then that it would never hold a treasure. As the olive tree's dream faded in the dusty stable, the oak tree looked out over the water with a dream of its own. Strong and proud, it dreamed that its mighty trunk would be made into a mighty ship that would carry a king. One day, shipbuilders cut down the oak tree and hauled it to their boat yard. They sawed the broad trunk into boards. They bent the boards to form the sides of the boat. With each passing day, the oak tree felt certain that its dream was coming true. But when the shipbuilders were done, the oak felt small and weak. It had not become a mighty ship at all. Instead, it was a little fishing boat launched on a calm lake. The mighty oak knew then that a king would never sail in a little fishing boat. High on the mountainside, above the oak boat, the pine tree stood tall. Many times it saw people in the valley looking up. The pine tree hoped that its towering branches would remind people of the glory of God's creation. It dreamed that it would always stay on the mountain and point people to God. One night a fierce storm shook the mountain. The pine tree bent and swayed in the powerful wind. As thunder boomed, a bolt of lightning flashed from the sky and splintered the tree's trunk. With a sound almost as loud as a thunder, the pine tree crashed to the ground. The pine tree's dream crashed down with it. No one would ever look up to it again. Its long trunk now just blocked the mountain road. The tree thought that things could not possibly get worse. But then strong soldiers hauled it to the scrapyard, unused and forgotten. The pine lay on a heap of an old lumber. It knew then that a piece of scrap wood could never point people to God. Many years passed, the tree's great dreams seemed so far away that they stopped thinking about them. For what greatness could come to a feed box, a fishing boat, and scrap of wood? But God had his own plan for each of the trees. One night, shepherds keeping watch over their flock saw an angel. A great light shone all around. The angel told them not to be afraid, for their Savior had been born in Bethlehem. Just as the angel had said, the shepherd found the baby lying in a manger. The olive tree had not become a treasure chest, but now as a manger it held the greatest treasure of all, God's only son, Jesus. The infant Jesus grew into a man, and the man traveled to the very lake that held the oak fishing boat. One day the little boat carried Jesus into the lake. With the fishermen, suddenly a great storm swept over the lake. Water washed into the boat. The oak boat struggled with all of its strength so it would not sink. 
quiet, be still, Jesus said. The storm stopped. The oak boat felt Jesus' power. The boat had never carried a king of this world, but now it carried the king of kings. The pine tree knew nothing of Jesus or his miracles, but one morning it heard angry voices in the distance. Crucify him! The people yelled. Soldiers came to the scrapyard and grabbed the forgotten pine. The pine tree expected to be cut into firewood. Instead, the soldiers cut its trunk into two pieces to make a cross. Then they laid the cross on Jesus' back. On a hillside, under a blackening sky, the pine cross swayed as the soldiers raised it. It did not know whether it could bear the weight of the man upon it. The pine tree had wanted only to point people to God. Now it knew it would become a sign of death. Jesus died that day to take away the sins of all who believe in him. He was taken down from the cross and laid inside a tomb. Then a wondrous thing happened. Three days later, Jesus rose to life again. And so Jesus fulfilled his heavenly father's plan for him. And what of the three trees? They too had fulfilled God's plans for them. Miraculously, God's plan had taken them beyond their youthful dreams. The olive wood manger had held the greatest treasure of all, God's beloved only son. The oak fishing boat had carried the king of kings, God's son, during his work on earth. And to this day, the cross points people to God as a symbol of his great love for us. Sometimes the dreams that we have for ourselves are much smaller than the dreams that God has for us. The three trees' dreams came true, just not in the way they imagined. And so it is with each of us. For if we follow God's path, we will travel far beyond even our greatest dreams. Should we wake up Grandpa? Yeah. Hey. One, two, three. Wake, wake up, up, Grandpa! Grandpa. Ooh, do you know that there is the story of great Uncle Marty's day, Christmas day with dysentery. Okay, and um... Well, hey, that was a good story, wasn't it? Huh? It was a good story. It was. Okay, so what we're going to do now is going to go get some eggnog. Hmm? And some cookies. And some cookies. Yeah. 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 Okay. And uh, maybe uh, some chocolate covered or anything that has nuts. That's good. Hmm? All right. Let's go. Let's go, kids. I love a good Christmas story. Thank you, Michelle. We got our eggnog and cookies. We hope you did too. That was wonderful. It was so good to see them. They seem to be in good health. Yes, except Robert did mention something about dysentery. Yes, I kind of realized that he was having a hard time admitting it. He was, I think he said that I had dysentery. Well, that's just not true. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you boys always teasing one another. Well, this Christmas, I think we need to sing Joy to the World. Let's go back to Darren and Cynthia. Well, that wouldn't be true. Let's go back to <laughs> Darren and Sarah and have them lead us continually. <laughs> Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let Heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature sing.
Marty, but those carols sure got me in the Christmas spirit. They certainly did me too. Thank you, Darren and Sarah. And thank all of you for being here today and waiting so patiently for our special guest. Yes, I've been looking forward to this all night. You I don't, have? Well, I have. Aww. I've, I've kind of been sitting here and... Giddy? A little bit giddy Aww. and a little bit in angst. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, without further ado, let's go to our special guest who is waiting. Uh, I'm actually not sure where he is, but let's go to him now and see where he's at. Well, I think he's like in the North Pole or something, isn't he? Oh, sorry. Well, hello, children, and a Merry Christmas to you from Santa. Merry Christmas. Ho, 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 ho. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas to you all. Do you know Christmas, Christmas Eve, the best thing that Santa likes about Christmas is traveling around the world in a, in a sleigh flying through the air with reindeer? Santa gets to do lots of cool things, but the best thing about Christmas is cookies. And as Santa travels around the world visiting place to place and house to house, it's the cookies that are left out for Santa that Santa enjoys the most. Ho, 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 ho! It's the night of cookies! And you know, back at my house, Mrs. Claus only lets me have four cookies a day. How is Santa supposed to keep in such Santa shape with only four cookies a day? I've never heard of something so preposterous. Ho, 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 ho! So as I travel around the world and find many delicious cookies at your house, it makes me happy. And that's what Santa likes about Christmas. Now, if you've been good and been good all year, Santa will come to your house. But being good all year is a very difficult task. If you think back to March, when you quit going to school and you stayed home, if you can think of a time that you perhaps annoyed your mother or didn't listen to an instruction from your father, being good all year is impossible. And if you're not good, you can't be on Santa's list. But that's the best thing about Christmas. If you happen to be bad or make a mistake, you can be forgiven. And God sent his son to be born. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas, the birth of Jesus. And this birth of Jesus allows us to have a relationship with God, even though you've been on the naughty list. And that is the best thing about Christmas. Off Santa's list. And, and if you're good, yes, you might receive a toy, a trinket, a gift card, something that your mother or your sister will probably sell on Facebook Marketplace in six months from now. But Jesus is here forever. And Jesus will be with you always. Santa's going to stumble through your house on one evening a year. Jesus is with you always. Ho, ho, ho. The best thing about Christmas is the birth of Jesus. Take it from Santa. Ho, 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 ho. Merry Christmas. Well, that was an unexpected, incredibly heartfelt message from Santa. Hey, children. I see why you were looking forward to it so much, Marty. Well, I was. Um, I didn't know exactly what he was going to say, but I was waiting for it most of the year and you did not disappoint. Thank you for speaking to our hearts and for sharing what's really most important. And thank you to all of you for being here, for being part of the chat. Thank you so much for our tech people and everybody who made this Christmas special possible. I think we should end with our whole family saying goodbye. That's actually a great idea. That's the hallmark finish, isn't it? 
I don't know if we'd be Hallmark happy without the official Hallmark finish. Well, let's call the boys. Come on down. We're going to finish with a picture. We're saying goodbye to our family, our church family. Our guests. Come on, boys. <laughs> Come Join on, us. boys. Come just like in between us here. We're just doing like a goodbye and a wave. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yes. Bye. You guys ready? Hey, Tucker, fix your no, tie. Don't. Hey. No. no. And this is like a big Riley. smile. We're happy. Nice wave. Happy. We're happy. Hey. Okay. Don't. All right. It actually hurt. Thank you guys. Very. Can you get your elbow out of my rib? And we can't see you, right? Yeah. Get in the middle well, here. Well, maybe because Dad's head is like right there. Well, that's rude. You are a little bit large. Okay, well, Move guys, over. come on. You're blocking the children. Riley. Okay, well, here we are. I just want to... Okay. Riley, don't touch it. Just so look. done! Stop! No, Riley, right. if you just behave and say Merry Christmas nicely mm -hmm. and wave, we're going to be finished. This can take 60 seconds. Yeah, we should have been done. My yeah. goodness. Last, okay. last try here, guys. Come on. Okay. Merry Christmas. Get your hand out of my Bye. face. See ya. Merry Christmas, Thank everybody. You. Have Bye. a happy Bye. Christmas. Guys. We miss you. Bye. We love, love you. you. Yes, stop. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas, everyone. everyone. Bye. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.